Well, how to varmints. In this video, we'll look at experimental data and time-lapse photography that shows how adding oyster shells, baking soda, or sodium citrate pH buffer can improve fermentation rates drastically over doing nothing at all. Which method will win? Place your bets now. Woohoo! <laughs> Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. This channel is dedicated to challenging home distilling traditions in a department setting. Please consider subscribing to follow my progress on building a fully robotic reflux still, operating on open source technology on a Raspberry Pi computer. To my side is time-lapse photography of the pH buffer batch that we'll talk more about later on. Notice how well the antifoam keeps the cross in from creeping up the sides of the fermenter walls, allowing us to put more sugar wash in without having to worry about blowover so much. Partway through day 13, you'll see the yeast suddenly drop out of suspension, after I added the chitosan and kisasol. Those are two-part clearing or fining agents. Don't worry about the white film that forms afterwards, it eventually settles out. I actually should have waited a few more days before adding the fining agents to this batch, as this batch did take longer to become truly crystal clear than any of the other batches. The final stages of fermentation were still taking place, even though the gravity reading wasn't changing in a noticeable way. Later in this video, we'll be reviewing scatter charts with trend lines derived from experimental data. If you want more detail about anything I talk about, or want to see the fermentation raw data notes, make sure you check out the link to my blog post in the description down below, and leave a comment on this video if you have any questions. If you are interested in the sugar wash recipe used in this video, I'll put a card in the corner and a link down below. This sugar wash has sugar, water, yeast, yeast nutrient, some oxygen bubbled in, and antifoam added to it. The starting gravity of the sugar wash is 1.070 and the starting pH is 6.0. I made four identical batches for this experiment. In one batch, we'll be using oyster shells as a fermenter addition to control pH. If you're interested in seeing how I prepared live oysters for sugar wash fermentation, I'll include a card in the corner of this video and a link down below. Initially, I added the top and bottom portion of a complete oyster shell to the fermenter and added another shell later on. For the next batch, we'll be using a pH buffer solution that I formulated out of citric acid, a weak acid, and sodium hydroxide, a strong base. If you would like to see the recipe and how I made this buffer, I'll include a card in the corner and a link down below. For the next batch, we'll be continually monitoring the pH and adding baking soda to bring up the pH when it gets too low. And the last batch is intended to be a control batch where nothing is done to control the pH whatsoever. Spoiler alert, things were taking so long that I did end up intervening, but more on that later. Let's cut to the chase and look at the graph for the pH readings during fermentation. The graphs I'll be showing you are scatter charts with trend lines fitted. To be fully transparent, the trend lines are fitted using fifth order polynomial equations, which smooth out the data points to coherent lines. The days of fermentation are on the horizontal x-axis, and I stopped each graph line at the point at which a gravity of 0.992 was reached. Therefore, the lines with the shortest x values fermented in the least amount of days. Notice that green baking soda and gray pH buffer have similar curved lines, but as we can see, the pH buffer reaches terminal gravity sooner than the baking soda. The oyster shells are represented by the blue line and the red line is the control batch. For the red control, I did end up adding oyster shells at about the 13 day mark because of the sluggish fermentation. So that is the reason why we see an increase in pH during the second half of the data set. 
For the blue oyster shells, I started with one oyster shell, top and bottom, and added another one about four days into fermentation. Also, take note that the oyster shells have an initial dip in pH, and then recover from it. I think this is because a lot of yeast activity happens at the beginning of fermentation, and it takes time for the oyster shells to dissolve and take effect. On the other hand, the pH buffer has a downward trend with almost no initial dip at all. This is likely because the buffer is already fully in solution and does not need to dissolve to do its job. On to the specific gravity chart. It took the red control batch almost 22 days to complete fermentation with intervention. The next fastest was the green baking soda batch at about 18 days. Then it's the blue oyster shells with about 13 days. And finally the race winner, gray pH buffer coming in at just under 11 days. What I found really interesting is that the gray pH buffer batch and the green baking soda batch maintained very similar pH readings during fermentation, but finished fermenting about seven days apart from each other. I can't explain why it took the baking soda almost 63% longer to reach terminal gravity but I would assume that it's something to do with the baking soda interfering with the yeast metabolism. Even the red control batch outpaced the baking soda batch initially, suggesting that something in the baking soda is affecting the fermentation rate. But I suppose the why isn't always so important. Just knowing the baking soda is not the best choice is good enough for me. If anyone knows why, please leave a comment down below. Finally, we have the rate of fermentation graph. The number on the y-axis represents the gravity change over a 24-hour period. Looking at the graph, we can see that all the batches start off on a downward trend before moving to an upward trend. The smallest initial downward trend is with the gray pH buffer, followed again by the blue oyster shells. The initial dip in the green baking soda batch is bigger than the blue oyster shells, but both batches follow similar curve lines. The red batch continues on a downward trend until oyster shells were added, causing the fermentation rate to increase. Notice that the blue oyster shell and the red control start off with the same rate over the first two or three days, and that the green baking soda has a lower rate than the red control for the first two or three days. The peak fermentation rate for the gray pH buffer and the blue oyster shells was 0.013. For the green baking soda, it was 0.010. And for the red control, the peak rate was 0.008, but that continually decreased until oyster shells were added. I think this was a great learning experience for a first round experiment regarding pH control. The data shows that the pH buffer and the oyster shells are the clear winners. And looking at the baking soda example, fermentation rates are more complicated than just keeping in a desirable pH range. Some pH control methods may negatively affect fermentation rates, while others may not. Furthermore, just because the pH buffer beat out oyster shells in this experiment, doesn't mean that it's the conclusive winner and the best choice outright. Just to be clear, speed isn't everything. There may be a point of diminishing returns where speed may affect flavor. The most important metric with spirit making is the taste, the yield, and the speed at which we obtain the final product. Sure, having great production rates is desirable, but that doesn't mean anything, and I mean anything, if your product tastes like garbage. But I suppose that's a topic for a future video. In future experiments, we will saturate sugar washes with crushed oyster shells and pit them against pH buffers with higher capacities. Personally, I can't wait to see what happens. And thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure you share it with your friends. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hope you're having a great day, and I love you all very, very much.